Our scripture lesson this morning comes from 1 Timothy, chapter 6, verses 6 to 10. <clears throat> but godliness with contentment is great gain, for we brought nothing into the world, and we take nothing out of it. But if we have food and clothing, we will be content with that. People who want to get rich fall into temptation and a trap, and many foolish and harmful desires that plunges men into ruin and destruction. For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. Some people, eager for money, have wandered from the faith and pierced themselves with many griefs. This end is our holy scripture for this morning. As Peggy was reading the rules of church etiquette, I don't know about you, but I was like ticking off all the ones that I have broken, right? <laughs> don't be late, don't sit in the back, don't fall asleep, all these things, right? But the, the point of that being, um, in a perfect church, you'd sure be lonely because none of us are perfect, right? We're just forgiven, amen? So as we look at our scripture for today, we find Paul writing to Timothy, to encourage him in how Timothy should be teaching the churches in Asia Minor. And when I read the scripture for today, I am reminded of the fable by Aesop about the grasshopper and the ant. And perhaps you are familiar with it, but if not, allow me to give you a brief overview. Uh, in this fable, the ant works hard throughout the spring, summer, and fall to store up food for the winter. And as that ant is working hard, the grasshopper loafs around. Um, in the original story, it said that the grasshopper spends his time dancing instead of working hard and storing up food for the winter. He decides that he is gonna dance and sing while he can in the warmer months. But as the winter does finally come, as it does every year, the grasshopper finds that he has no food and he is starving to death. And he goes to the ant and begs him for food. But the ant tells him that he will not give him anything to eat and that he should just go ahead and dance away the winter as well. Now, when we hear this fable or when we tell it to our children, what we often point out is the grasshopper and how he was in the wrong, that he should have been working and saving so that he would have enough to eat in the winter. We point out the industriousness of the ants and tell our children that they must make sure that they are working and putting away for difficult days when they come, because we all know that difficult days will come. And this is a good lesson for us all to learn, right? Well, yes, and perhaps no. You see, it is a good thing for us to work hard. It is a good thing for us to prepare for what we believe may come in the future. But when we view this story through the frame of what Christ has taught us, then we can see that there are a few points that we might need to change. The first being that the ant was unwilling to help the grasshopper. Oh, I know he got what he deserved, right? That grasshopper was lazy and he didn't choose to work in order to have food. Well, fables are, by their nature, very simple. And they are written in a way so that children may understand them. But when we view it through the lens of what Jesus has taught us, things can become a bit more complicated. You see, Jesus wouldn't want us to allow our fellow man to starve. He wouldn't care about the reason that they were suffering, whether it was through their own actions or those of another. If someone came to us for help, Jesus would want us to help them. Why do I believe this? Well, it is because of the grace of Jesus. You see, he saved me from a life of sin before I was even born. And he gave his life for me so that I could one day be in heaven with him. 
He did it freely and in spite of all of my many failings. Now, if he did that for me, wouldn't he want me to extend his grace to anyone else that I met when they needed it? Now, I am not an overly political person, and I know that that might sound odd for someone to say in this day and age where it seems politics dominate everything that we do. But I must tell you, over the past few years, I have struggled with things that I have seen. Especially when it comes to the treatment of those that are in need. As I've watched the media coverage over these years, I found myself thinking of this verse. Starting in Matthew chapter 22, verse 35, For I was hungry, and you fed me. I was thirsty, and you gave me a drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me into your home. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you cared for me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous ones replied to the Lord, Lord, when, when, when did we ever see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you something to drink, or a stranger and show you hospitality, or naked and give you clothing? When did we ever see you sick or in prison and visit you? And the king will say, I tell you the truth, when you did it to one of the least of these, my brothers and sisters, you were doing it to me. See, this, brothers and sisters, is our guiding principle when we consider how we are treating those that society looks down upon. Jesus is very clear in what he calls us to do. Whatever you do to the least of these, you are doing to Jesus. Now, you may be thinking to yourself this morning, you know what? I think he's finally lost it. The pastor is way off on what our scripture says today, right? We're talking about the love of money. Isn't that what the scripture was and the content, being content with what you have? Why is he telling us an old fable and then pointing out the troubles that we've witnessed over the past years? Well, I would tell you this. You see, when I started with these stories, I did it to make this point about our scripture for today. And it is this. When we consider the ant and grasshopper and when we think about how those poor people have been treated. When we think about not allowing ourselves to become enamored with money, we are really getting to the root of this idea, and it is this. What are you storing up for yourself? The ant stored food, and those that refuse to help the poor store up money. But when we consider that ant, what would that look like for us in this world? Well, that would be someone that is only storing up money. And I said earlier, I do not disagree with hard work and saving. No, those are good things. We should learn those lessons. But the danger becomes for us when chasing money is all that we care about. You see, the verse in Timothy reads, the love of money is the root of so many evils. When we allow our wealth to be our goal in this world, when we allow it to become something that takes the place of our work for Christ, we are storing up something that will never make us whole. And we are storing up something that is fleeting. We are warned that allowing ourselves to do this is that root of many evils and has caused many a people to walk away from their faith. Perhaps you've heard the old saying, the streets of heaven are paved in gold, but the path to hell is also paved in gold. And there's a reason for that. Chasing that path of gold will lead you in the opposite direction of where you want to go. Christ tells us in Matthew chapter 6, verse 24, No man can serve two masters. You cannot serve God and money. So then if storing up money is not to be our goal in this world, what should we be storing up? Well, again, in Matthew chapter 6, Jesus tells us, Do not store up riches for yourselves here on earth, where moths and rust destroy and robbers break in and steal. 
Instead, store up riches for yourselves in heaven, where moths and rust cannot destroy and robbers cannot break in and steal. For your heart will always be where your riches are. You see, Christ is calling us to store up our treasures in heaven. How is it that we can do that? Well, we store up treasures in heaven by doing good deeds in the name of Christ. We store up treasures in heaven by serving our fellow man in their time of need. And we store up treasures in heaven by doing our best to follow the path that Jesus has set before us and by keeping his words. We first begin to store up our treasures by giving our hearts over to Jesus. As he said in verse 21, where your heart is will always be where your riches are. Now do not get confused here. We are not talking about storing up material possessions in heaven, nor are we saying that we are saved by works alone. However, we are told that each of us will indeed be judged by those deeds. And in doing so, we want to make sure we are storing up those good deeds in the name of Christ. The ones that are not done so that we receive a blessing, but the ones that are done by blessing others. So my question for you today to consider is this. What are you storing up? Have you dedicated your life to storing up the earthly riches of money? Have you dedicated your life to the empty politics of this world that will pass away? Have you dedicated your life and decided that you will ignore the plight of the poor and that they are on their own? If so, brothers and sisters, I have to wonder what you might be storing up for yourself in heaven. Perhaps you listened to this story this morning and thought, you know, he was pretty hard on the ant, but he really let that lazy grasshopper get off. Well, he does not get off scot-free today. He is next. You see, the grasshopper for us to view in the lens of what Jesus uh, would have us do or what we see in this world today is that grasshopper is someone who seeks only pleasure in this world. And oh, how the world wants us to be those pleasure seekers. Take this drug, drink this drink, and don't worry, everything will work out just fine. Well, there are only so many hours in a day and if we are allowing ourselves to simply chase after the pleasures of this world, then we are again failing to store up treasures in heaven. Now, if you have found yourself in that life, chasing after only pleasures of this world, if it hasn't started to yet, I promise you at some point, it's going to start to feel real hollow. I pray that you don't have to hit your rock bottom before you see the air of your ways and turn to Christ. But if you do, know that his grace and mercy will be waiting for you. And know that your brothers and sisters here in the church will be waiting here to help you as well. Because we would love to help you start storing up your treasures in heaven. Finally, I will leave you with this thought today. I think instead of being an ant or a grasshopper, we should all be squirrels. Now, you might be thinking, you know, I thought he lost it earlier, but I'm pretty sure he just said we should be squirrels, and so now I know that he is completely off his rocker this week. However, if you've ever had the pleasure of watching squirrels in the wild, and not just when they get into your bird feeder, but actually squirrels out in the, in the forest, you will know that squirrels do work hard to store up good things, but they also spend time with one another and enjoy their lives. They run around and play in the woods. And one thing that squirrels do as well is look out for one another. Whenever you're in the woods and a squirrel has a, an idea that there is some sort of danger, whether it be you a hunter or as it happened to me yesterday, um, a squirrel was barking and barking and barking. I thought it was me. Um, and then all of a sudden I looked and there was a fisher coming after and chasing the squirrels as well. If you don't know, a fisher is like a weasel that will hunt squirrels. And so that is what the squirrel was doing. He was barking and yelling at this fisher, but he was doing so to warn the other squirrels that there was a danger present. So 
we should be more like squirrels, working hard to store up good things, taking time to enjoy life, but also making sure that we are taking care of one another. When we see dangers coming, warning one another of those dangers. So you see, I do believe we should be more like squirrels. My challenge for you this week is this, be a squirrel. No, my challenge for you is this. <laughs> I want you to really look at what it is that you are storing up for yourself. What is it that you're storing up in heaven by the way that you are living? And if that needs to change, make it change this week. Amen.